Who is the best duo in Fortnite history? Were Cami and Seti really better than Queezy and Vino? Would Zay and Saf still be dominating today if they didn't retire? And are Peter Bot and Poyo actually that good? Well, let's break it down. If you were to ask anyone who the best duo was in OG Fortnite, they would say Tifu and Cloaksy. To start off, they were two of the most popular streamers and for good reason. Before Fortnite themselves started hosting the tournaments we have today, the main tournament format was a kill race. This meant that two duos would ready up for squads together and whichever duo had more eliminations would win. The biggest tournament at the time was called Friday Fortnite. These tournaments featured the best players in the game and they were hosted every Friday with a prize pool of $20,000. Out of the nine Friday Fortnites they competed in, Tifu and Cloaksy won four times. This this was insane to do considering the kill race format has a decent amount of luck involved. Around the same time they started dominating these, Fortnite announced the fall skirmish with a prize pool of $4 million. Tifu won both weeks of the solo competition, securing himself $75,000 and heading into the fall skirmish finals at TwitchCon, him and Cloaksy were favorites to win. And they did not disappoint. Knock, but Flames got everything you get ever need too. Cloaksy's trying to shoot down this top side so they can't heal. Can they do it? There's just three players left. They're dropping him on down. Will they be able to out-survive this zone? They're floating. Tifu's now knocked. He can't use his heals. Cloaksy ticking on down. Just 20 health remaining. Gets one. Who wound up winning it? Cloaksy's down on the low ground as well, I believe. They got Tifu it. They did it. One. Your number one duo. It's Tifu and Cloaksy. The next major competition after this was the $30 million Fortnite World Cup. By now, Tifu was still in his prime, but Cloaksy stopped grinding, so they weren't as good as they were before. Because of this, Tifu was able to qualify for the Solo World Cup, but they would not be able to qualify as a duo. This would be the last tournament they ever played together as a duo, but for a full year, they were easily two of the best players in the game. The next duo to dominate an era was Zay and Saf. In March of 2019, they competed in the ESL Katowice Global LAN in Poland. This tournament was stacked with all of EU and NA's best duos, and nobody could have predicted what would happen next. They can just stay on top and just wait this out. Just look at that. Shinkin just fighting. They're trying to, it's trying, trying to hold off his dear life. They're trying but to it shoot it to one, and it's only Shinkin that survives. Satan Seth has been converted, and they do. Unbelievable. Three Unbelievable. victory royales for Satan Seth, and surely that's it. It's been an incredible time here in Katowice. So give it up for Seth and Zay. They won the tournament by over 200 points, but this was just the beginning of their run. With the World Cup starting soon, they were obviously a favorite to make it, and they ended up qualifying in three out of the five weeks. Going into the last game of the Duo World Cup Finals, they were in first place by three points and needed one more decent game to secure $3 million. Sadly, we all know how this ends, with Saf getting sniped, and they ultimately finished in fourth place. In next season's Trio FNCS, they would team up with Zypha and win one of the weekly qualifiers before placing fourth in Grand Finals. After this was squads where Zayt and Saf picked up High Sky and Commandment. This squad won three of the four weekly qualifiers before ending fourth in Grand Finals. After three fourth places in a row, Zayt was tired of not winning, and this made him and Saf put all of their energy into Chapter 2 Season 2's duo up in CS. With both of them locked in, they would easily win, but unfortunately, duo events were pushed to the side for a couple years. They would continue to dominate in trios no matter who their third was, consistently placing top 10 before ultimately retiring. With this crazy of a run during a time where Fortnite Competitive had its most players, there is a solid argument for Zayt and Saf to be considered the best duo of all time. After this season, there weren't any major duo events until Chapter 3, but before that started, a new duo was starting to win everything. That duo was Booga and Mero. Although I'm talking about the best duo of all time, I think we have to include some other placements as long as they're playing together. They would start their run in Chapter 2 Season 8 where they teamed up for the first time alongside Muzz. This trio would go on to win Grand Finals and shortly after this was FNCS Grand Royale. Although Booga and Mero just won an FNCS with Muzz, they thought they could perform even better with somebody else, so they picked up Duke. And this turned out to be a great decision, because with Duke on the team, they won Grand Royale by over 70 points, and there was never a time throughout the entire tournament where it seemed like they wouldn't win. Winning back-to-back -back FNCSs with different teammates was already impressive, but with duos being the same game mode for all of Chapter 3, there was a chance we could see back-to-back-to-back -back -back wins from Booga and Mero. Of course, they won yet again by 50 points, securing their third straight FNCS win in the last four months. Not only were they winning, they were absolutely dominating. While they only won one cash cup during this time period, it's mainly because they just didn't care and it didn't seem to matter because for the rest of 2022, their placements were still insane. In Chapter 3 Season 2, they finished in 3rd place and in Season 3, they were bound to win their 4th FNCS together, but Commandment pulled off one of the most legendary solo clutches of all time. 
got to come out swinging. What can he do? The big pot's popped. He's got 100 health, 100 shield around the corner. What can he find? A big 100 tag commandment. Might have just found his refresh. Two elims. He takes down Muzz and he takes down Clicks. Clicks and Dukes are out of this and commandment is still going. Seven builds, three eliminations. Commandment, Thatch and Pamstu are trying to play spoiler here. They do not want Vuga and Mira to win yet again another FNCS title on NAEs. Remember, Commandment has never won an FNCS. Pamstu and Fash technically have never won an FNCS. Commandment goes down with another elimination. Even with the points not counting, I don't know if that's going to be enough. No fucking way. Commandment and Avery win by a singular point. This would be just enough for Avery and Commandment to edge out Booga and Mero by one point. The last tournament of Chapter 3 was the FNCS Invitational in Raleigh, North Carolina. They were the favorites to win the tournament by far, especially out of all the NA teams. Unfortunately, due to a combination of being contested at their drop and Storm Surge issues, they placed 36th and the Booga x Mero duo would come to an end. Just as their reign of terror was finally over, another duo's was just beginning. Kami and Seti were slowly but surely building up their resume in the European region. They won Chapter 2 Season 8's FNCS alongside Teak, then play second in Grand Royale right after. Seti decided to duo with Teak for the first season of Chapter 3, but after finishing 20th in Grand Finals, he started playing with Kami instead. At first, they were not as impressive as Buga and Mero, but a 5th and ninth place finish in the last two FNCSs of 2022 was more than enough to qualify them for the FNCS Invitational. Going into the event, they were way more prepared than anybody else, and it showed in their performance. Obviously, you can't talk about FNCS Invitational without mentioning this moment where Kami and Seti secured the tournament win by eliminating Queezy and Vino off spawn that best drop at that time. Whoa! What is this? What is this? Queasy, Vino are trying to take it by force. You only win in one way, and that's taking that crown. Vino is here. Queasy is here. Down goes Seti. It's a big trade. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. This has to be one of the most explosive head-to-heads we have ever seen. Vino has to get this thirst here. He knows now it means everything. We might as well seal this deal. Why wait? Rumble Shield going out. He's trying to bait it. He's trying to bait the revive so that way Cammy might peek. Breaks through the wall. Shot's gonna be fired! And they do it! Become Legends are on top! Become Legends has officially managed to win the biggest fight of their career! By winning the first international land since World Cup, they were immediately considered the best duo in Fortnite, and after a rough start in 2023, they would place 4th and 5th in the last two majors, qualifying for the global championships yet again. Although Mero and Cooper would win this event, Kami and Seti once again showed up on land, finishing in 2nd place. Kami is the undisputed best land player in the game, as he also managed to win the Gamers 8 land for $500,000 in the summer of 2023. In the most recent FNCS, Kami and Seti finished 3rd, meaning that they are still just as good. With a prime lasting almost 3 years and still going, it is easy to put them in the debate for the best duo of all time. The next duo I think could be considered one of the best of all time is Queezy and Vino. After Queezy won FNCS with Hen in Chapter 3 Season 1, and Vino won it in Season 2 with Aqua, both of them were looking for a teammate, so they decided to join forces and start playing together. They clicked immediately and placed 1st, 2nd, and 2nd in the first 3 duo cash cups they played, and then finished 3rd in Season 3's Grand Finals. This allowed them to qualify for FNCS Invitational, but in the tournaments before it, we would see domination like never before. Out of the 4 Elite Cups hosted, they won 2 of them and finished second in the other two and managed to win one on NA on 100 ping. Obviously, we know how FNCS Invitational ends with them placing second behind Kami and Seti, but they weren't done yet. In Chapter 4 Season 2, they put up one of the greatest Grand Finals performances ever, winning 6 out of 12 games and winning the tournament by 150 points. At the same time, they basically won every Cash Cup this season, but right at the peak of their performance, they would fail to qualify for FNCS Heats the following season. After a mediocre performance at the Global Championship, the Queasy x Vino duo would come to an end, but it was one of the most dominant runs in Fortnite history, which is why I think they could easily make their way into this argument. The last duo is, in my opinion, the best team in the game right now, and it is Peterbot and Poyo. They started playing together at the end of 2023, and since then, they have done nothing but win. To start, they won back-to-back -back tournaments during OG Fortnite, then a cash cup at the beginning of Chapter 5 Season 1. They consistently placed top 5 in every tournament leading up to FNCS Finals, where they placed a very respectable second. Of course, the next season would introduce Grimgate. Grimgate had the Dash Medallion, which took Peter and Poyo 
from a great duo to the best in the game. Even while being contested most tournaments, they won 4 out of 4 duo cash cups, winning 6 out of 6 games in one and 5 out of 6 in another. Out of the 24 games played in duo cash cup finals that season, they won 16 of them. The difference in this duo compared to everybody else on this list is just how scary they were. Most of the pros would try their best to avoid getting W keyed, but most of the time it did not work. He's dipping. He's coming. Swim in the ocean. Go swim in the ocean. Get away. He's coming. Drop the medallion and get out of there. You need to go. You need to get the fuck out. It's, it's him. It's him. You can't talk about this duo without mentioning the records they broke in each week of solo victory cups. Every solo victory cup for two months had at least one of them dropping a 30 kill win. Before FNCS finals this season, everybody already knew Peter and Poyo would win, but the question was how many points would they win it by? And the answer was 339 points. They won 5 out of 12 games and almost got 1100 points. A performance like this should not be possible today because everybody is already so good, but they managed to find a way to do it. They've also been just as dominant in season 3, placing 6th in week 1 of FNCS, then winning week 2 along with the duo cash cup. With the best drop on the map uncontested heading into FNCS heats, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw them go back to back. Although their run has only gone on for 6 months, they already deserve a spot in the conversation for the best duo of all time. If I had to choose one of these duos as the best of all time, I would go with Kami and Seti. Placing 1st and 2nd in the two global lands on top of the fact that they have been so dominant for so long just makes them too good. Most of the other duos on this list were only good for 1-2 to two years, but Kami and Seti have been at the top for a long time and still are. In the future, I wouldn't be surprised if Peter and Poyo become the undisputed greatest duo, but for now, it's Kami and Seti. Let me know who you think is the best duo of all time in the comments, and drop a sub so I can reach 100,000 subs by the end of the year.